Hello tabletop fans, welcome back to our live stream. Um, we are going to paint Game of Thrones figures today. So we have a Stark foot soldier here and I'm going to show you a really quick but effective way on painting this guy uh, with some really easy techniques and some quick steps. So without any further ado, let's get started. So first of all, we prime our miniature black with a Kale's black spray, for example, or any matte black spray. And the first step we're going to do is paint the armor. And we're going to do this in a very quickly and simple way with dry brushing. So we need some toilet paper, a dry brush, and first of all, we need to color warp block bronze. So we're going to apply this on our dry brush. So like so, wipe a little bit of that off on our toilet paper. You don't need to be too careful with this one. And we're just gonna paint this all over our miniature. So make some circular motions and you can be really rough with this. You don't need to be very precise. Just make sure every spot on your miniature has a little bit of that warp block bronze on there. So as you can see, I'm not being really careful here. Just make sure every little piece has a bit of warp bronze in it. All right, so that's already step one. There we go. So step two is we're going to do the same thing, but this time with lead belcher. So with this one, we want to remove a little bit more and I'm not even cleaning my brush. Just make sure there's not too much warp bronze on there. So as you can see, there's barely anything coming off because it doesn't really matter if these two mix a little bit. So again, I'm gonna remove most of the excess paint now, a little bit more than with the warp block bronze, and we're gonna apply it in the, same, um, in the same way again. So make some very small circular motions. And make sure Again, every part of your model has a little bit on that. Don't forget the blade. And it doesn't matter if it comes in the face or anything. All right, so that's step two, there we go. That's almost the armor done. All right, so the next step is we're going to clean our brush first. Don't forget to clean your brush because we're not using the dry brush anymore. And just two seconds, I'm gonna grab a standard brush here. So, there we go. And the next color we need is Rockart Flash because we're going to do the ropes or the tabards. So, sorry, next color, Rockart Flash. Give it a quick shake. Put it on my palette. You want to add a little bit of water to this, just to slightly thin it down. And then we're going to apply this color on all the tabards and all the clothing. And you don't need to be, you want to be a little bit more precise with this step, but don't worry if you spill a little bit on the belts, for example, because we're going to repaint those anyway. Little bit over here. So just make sure you get all that clothing done. And you want to be a little bit more precise towards all the chainmail because we don't want some paint on that. If that happens, if you make a mistake and there's a little bit of work art flesh coming on the chainmail, you can always grab a little bit of lead belcher and put that on there. And I am doing this with Ricard Flash because I really like the, the sort of white tone to it. Uh, but you can do this basically with any color. If you really want to give your Starks, for example, a red tabard, you can also do this with a red color. Or you can do it with a blue color. So you can really explore your own color schemes as well. Also a little bit 
Yes. So he has an icon over here. I'm not sure if you can see this really clear, but as if you're painting Star yourself, he has a little bit of a, the house logo on his chest. We don't want to paint that in uh, in this color, so just go around that. A little bit left to do over here. A little bit over there. All right. So once we've done all the tablets with Ricard Flesh, we clean our brush again. We're going to the next step, which is all the, the belts and all the leather pieces. So for this, I am using dried bark, which is a very dark brownish color. Uh, you can also use Rhino's Height if that's the one you have, or any dark brown color for that matter. And once again, apply to your palette. Add a little bit of water. Alright, so the pieces I'm going to paint with this are, for example, the boots. I'll apply this color to both of the boots. And we can also apply this to things like, for example, the belt. So he has a belt running over here. And that might be a little bit tricky because it's a very small piece. So what you could do to is grab your brush, grab some paint on it and twist it like this so you get a nice tip on your brush and that way it will make it a lot more easier to pick out details like this alright he also has a belt on his upper chest here All right, so that's the letter pieces. All right, so the last step before we're going into the shade is we're going to uh, give the face a little bit of a color. So for the face, I am right away starting with Kitty and Flesh Tone. This is not a base color, but um, the, the official base color for Kitty and Flesh Tone would be Buxman Glow, which is fine, but I think it's a little bit too dark. So I'm starting with Kitty and Flesh Tone right away. So you might need to put down two thin layers of this to get a good coverage. So just put that on the face. And if there's a lot of black color still showing through, you might have to apply a second coat. Just make sure it's thin. All right. Well, the next step is uh, pretty easy. It's uh, an all over shade with Agris Earth Shade. The only thing you want to avoid with this shade is the face. So you could also wait with painting the face and shade Agris Earth Shade first. And once it dried up, then paint the face because we're going to use a different shade for the face. But for the rest, we're going to use Agris Earth Shade. So grab a nice big shade brush, add it on your palette, you don't need to thin this down, and just apply that all over your miniature. But again, if you have already painted the face with the color, just avoid the face. But for the rest of the miniature, you can put this on your whole miniature. So, as you can see, here I'm just avoiding the base, just go around it a little bit. You could also, if you really want to, uh, shade the face as well with Agris Earth Shade. Uh, that's fine, it works fine, it just gives a different tone in the skin. 
and I like the more uh, the reddish tone a little bit more on the skin so this is why I'm going to shade it with a different color all right so once you apply the shade on your homolo you just need to let it dry for mostly probably around 20 or 30 minutes um, but I already got one that's dry over here so as you can see this is the model where the shade has dried already so we're going to uh, do some extra little details on this model now is we're you're gonna do some some highlights but we're just going to highlight the tabard um, so this is a really quick quick sort of like speed painting scheme we're going for um, so first of all we're going back to the first color Ricard Flash so once again put a little bit of that on your palette And again, you see as I'm twisting my brush to remove most of the excess paint and make a nice tip on my brush as well. And we're just going to capture the, the raised areas on this model. So for example, on the clothes here, you can see that the, the shade sort of has given us uh, some shadow effect. So those this deeper part, you want to keep those dark. So for example, over here, I just want to make a quick fine line on this. And what I like to do uh, with a lot of my miniatures when I'm highlighting is do a sort of a feathering technique. So I'm just going to keep placing these sort of little quick lines because that way you also get a sort of like an old looking texture on your clothes as well so I'm just doing very little fine quick stripes on the tabard and just making sure that those deeper parts for example the, the, the shade has settled I'll leave those alone go a little bit more over here all right and a little bit on the front here also a little bit a little bit on the side here and some parts are a little bit harder to reach for example over here but you can also just leave that for what it is because uh, it creates some shadow effect as well just a little bit more on top here so as you can see I, I'm just doing this very little feathering kind of thin lines all right so that's step one sorry guys step two is to do the same thing but this time with palette with flesh and what we're trying to do here is to again do this feathering technique but try to focus more on the on the center of the lines that we all already created with the record flash. So for example, there's record flash over here, over the line. So I'm just going to focus more to the center of that. So again, doing very thin stripes. And I'm going to be even more careful with this one. But as you can see, I keep doing these small little feathering lines and that way as you can see you get a little bit of extra I don't know effect or texture in your in your clothings also here in the arms you can see I'm just doing a little bit on the top of it also a little bit on the front here all right and this area over here just a very little touch there and as you can see you get a really nice quick effect on your clothing and we're actually almost done with our miniature. So as you can see, I already uh, also shaded the face here with the this color. So I did not do that on cam camera, but if you're wondering, uh, the face is shaded in the same way as armor, just with regular flash shade. And that gives a more reddish tone to it. So once again, you can also shade it with aggro shirt shade. That's totally fine. It just gives a different tone. Um, but I've done it with regular flash shade. So we can also give a little bit of a highlight to the skin 
And for that, we're going to first use the original color again, so Cadian Flesh Tone. Just, we just need a really just small amount of Cadian Flesh Tone because it's only a small face. So we're just going to touch a little bit of the nose and a little bit of the cheeks and just a real tiny touch on the lip. And that's it, basically. And I'm going to do a final highlight on it, but before I do that, I'm first going to give the beard a little bit of color. So with uh, the beard, I'm just doing a simple Abaddon black color. You could also try to do it with a black Templar color, um, because we have been trying out these contour paints lately and they are also really nice for especially gun parts or small black details like beards. All right, so for the beard, I'm using Abaddon Black, so make sure you have a nice tip in your brush again. And just slightly touch that. The beard. And I also want a little bit down here on his cheek. There we go. All right. So there's actually just one more thing to do, and that's to give the skin a final highlight. And we do that with Kisla Flesh. So once again, we need just a little bit, add a little bit of water as well. And you want to, again, you want to use this lighter color on the skin just on the raised area. So for example, I'm just picking out the nose here. And a little bit on his cheek as well, just a little dot. Also on the other side. And his lip once again. And there we go. And this is basically all there is to it. Now there are some optional steps, of course. You can also put a little highlight uh, on the letter if you want to. Um, but it, this is already tabletop standard. So uh, for a finished result, what should you, I mean, you can also paint your base, of course. So what I did is give it, of course, a classic snowy base. Um, and I used uh, the uh, Citadel's uh, Snow Valhallen Blizzard color, I believe it's called for this one. And some uh, snowy tufts from Army Painter. Um, but as you can see, I also did a little bit of a retouch on the on the on the leather straps, so just a lighter brown color. And for this example, I used a more fang brown, um, but that's totally optional. And also to uh, give some more flavor to the shields with some of these wooden shields, I also made that rock art flash. Did a very light dry brush of palette of liquid flash over them. Um, but some of the foot soldiers just have these metallic shields. And I mean, you could also. Uh, you could also, uh, for example, fill in these logos on here with a bronze color, for example, just to give it a little bit more flavor. But that's basically all to it. So as you can see, I've got a few over here. And it's done really quickly. And again, you can also replace that white color for uh, the tablets with a red or blue color if you want to go for a different scheme. But that's it, guys. So uh, I hope this was uh, useful for you guys. And yeah. Check out our future videos. We're going uh, to do a lot more uh, tutorials in the, in the future as well, as well with some better reports. So uh, keep an eye out for our schedule. Subscribe to our channel or like this video. Uh, thank you very much. And we see you next time.